Hello, everybody. Okay, I think we'll we'll get started. It's eleven thirty-one. So, um, hello, my name is Liz. I am director of strategic initiatives with the John Howard Society. I'm based in Vancouver. So we're very happy to be hosting our first speaker series as part of our national conference, which was due to take place in Kamloops at the end of May. But unfortunately, we've had to, um, to kind of reformat our design. And here we are um, using webinar to um, enable some of the presenters that we were anticipating uh, attending the, the conference in Kamloops in person to be able to present their content to staff um, from GHS and GHS partners and contacts across the country. So we're really excited to launch this. This is our first, first session. So I um, wanted to just give a little outline, which is that um, the John Howard Society vision in BC is what's safe, healthy and inclusive communities. And the presentation everyone's going to hear today around the Guthrie therapeutic community, I think really is a demonstration of that work that's, um, that's working towards achieving our vision. That being said, it would be remiss of me not to acknowledge that all of the work in BC takes place on the unceded traditional lands of the Coast Salish people. And that there remains much work to be done to address the overrepresentation of indigenous people in the criminal justice system. But that being said, just before I present uh, the team here um, from Nanaimo, I just want to let you know that each of our presentations over June and July will be in a slightly different format. So today's is a dialogue between two staff members and two people who've participated in the program. So as um, some of you are already uh, establishing, you can submit questions and comments in the chat function on the right hand side of your screen. And as um, presenters and hosts, we'll be monitoring those questions. Uh, so the presentation will um, take the, uh, the first part of the session. And then towards the end, there'll be time to, for the team to respond to questions. So we will um, be highlighting them and get to as many as we can. And also following this first event, we will be sharing a survey um, with everybody who is able to attend. And we'd really appreciate you taking the time to, uh, to fill it in and submit those responses so that we can make each of our sessions um, as best as they can be. So without further ado, I will hand over to John McCormick. He is the Executive Director of the Nanaimo Region John Howard Society. Thanks very much. Okay, just trying to get my mic or my speaker or uh, video to show up, there we go. Uh, Hello everyone across Canada. <clears throat> nice to see people from Newfoundland and Calgary and Hay River and uh, I'm sure there'll be others that will chime in as well. Uh, we're really thrilled to be uh, participating in this uh, national uh, virtual conference and uh, um, we are uh, excited to be sharing uh, our program with you. Uh, we'll begin by also acknowledging that we are uh, working and living in the unceded territory here of the Sinemak people. Uh, it's the uh, it's the First Nation community from which the name Nanaimo comes from, and uh, uh, we are uh, we have a, a long-standing and terrific working relationship uh, with that community, and uh, and we really appreciate um, the opportunity to work with uh, within that community and with uh, community members. Um, today's presentation, I'm going to share a little uh, a PowerPoint presentation to kind of keep me on track as much as anything else. Uh, occasionally, I will bring up a slide or two that uh, that uh, connects to the conversation that we're having. Uh, the format that we're going to use is uh, that we will do a little bit of an uh, a, uh, introduction about therapeutic community, and then we'll have a roundtable conversation with uh, our um, the four of us, and then we'll, uh, we'll entertain questions from you. And that way, I think uh, we'll make it flow. If there are questions that come along uh, during the presentation, please submit them. And if I can uh, insert them into the conversation, I absolutely will. And if not, we'd love to answer those questions. Um, I think the uh, the time we're going to work with is it's a, it's uh, about 11:34 here. We'll do about uh, 45 minutes of uh, conversation, and then we'll entertain questions for as long as as you'd like to ask. Uh, so I would uh, like to introduce my three uh, other colleagues on this uh, presentation. Um, 
Lynn Kader is the Director of Therapeutic Community. She has been uh, working in therapeutic community from the very start of that program here in, uh, in Nanaimo and uh, is, would be considered a, a, a national treasure in terms of her knowledge and skills around therapeutic community. Uh, Joe Kramer is a, a, an alumni of the Therapeutic Community Program. Joe works in theater industry and uh, is uh, a, just a wonderful person, uh, lots of fun. We were doing a tongue twister um, warm ups before this presentation happened, so it was lots of fun. And uh, Harry Shergill is, uh, is, uh, was recently at the Guthrie Therapeutic Community and is now living at Vancouver Island Therapeutic Community. Harry's a professional painter by uh, profession and uh, is also a wonderful person who got stuck in Delhi, India for about uh, two months over the COVID experience. So uh, he's happy to be home and uh, we're happy to have him back uh, safe and sound as well. So um, I will tell you very briefly that we are, uh, uh, in terms of the Nanaimo Therapeutic Community Program, we have two programs. We have a program at Guthrie uh, Therapeutic Community at the Nanaimo Correctional Center. Uh, it's a provincial correctional center and uh, that program has about up to 50 participants at any given time, a little less right now because of challenges around moving um, residents uh, into the program. And the other program that we have is uh, the Vancouver Island Therapeutic Community. Lynn gave me uh, permission to use this picture even though she wasn't thrilled I was using it. Uh, it's, uh, um, uh, it's a great program and that's where, uh, where Lynn works out of and Harry is uh, living at this time. And there's uh, uh, up to 20 residents there at any given time. Uh, in addition to that, we are, uh, we're working with, um, with others outside of the province on setting up a couple of therapeutic communities. And part of our interest today is uh, to invite you to have a conversation with us. We don't want this program, which we have seen to be remarkable uh, and incredibly effective relative to correctional programs and even just programs in general, uh, uh, to just stay in Nanaimo. And we really do want to help you, uh, any of you who are interested, to set up uh, therapeutic community or even just have a, an exploration of what that might look like in your community uh, in an apartment building, supportive recovery housing, in a correctional center setting, uh, maybe you're, uh, you're working in a CRF, um, in any of those kinds of settings. Uh, it's really effective. It's, uh, it also is, uh, because it's, um, it does a number of things very effectively Lynn's going to cover, uh, it's, uh, it, uh, it becomes a very good way to um, to have participants participate in the overall well-being of each other and, uh, and also to manage a program very effectively. So I'm going to ask Lynn Kader if she could uh, just give us a quick uh, sort of uh, shallow dive into what therapeutic community is, primarily just to give us a sense of context for this. And then uh, uh, after that, we'll, we'll uh, launch into some questions and conversation about um, therapeutic community with, with Joe and, uh, and Harry. Take it away, Lynn. Thanks, John. So the therapeutic community, like John mentioned, there is two locations in Nanaimo. Both programs, um, we ask that there is a minimum four-month commitment, and it is voluntary. Uh, none of the people that reside in either programs are mandated to attend. Uh, the focus for the TC is the community is the healer rather than an individual focus. Although we do provide one-on-one -on -one counseling, all of the work done in both programs are done in a group-based setting and we sit in circles. Um, the reason for that is we believe that the gentlemen learn from each other and the experiences that they've had and all the information that gets shared in TC does become public knowledge to everybody and I think that's what makes it such a powerful program is that they're the ones that hold each other accountable, they share their life experience, and they know that they're not alone and it really kind of creates that community feel. So we use the language called community as method in the sense that everything that we do, um, the staff are there, we call ourselves rational authority, but the program is actually run by the residents that live there. So we ask them to deal with all their conflicts, we ask them to try to resolve through mediation. Should they be unable to do that, that's when the staff would step into um, helping them facilitate any changes that need to be made. And the, the way we do that is through something called a leadership board, a structure board. And so we have a house leader. Harry is actually the house leader at the ITC currently. And so he actually is the one that runs 
the program and then he just filters down information to the staff when it's needed and then he's the one that makes sure all the other leaders in the program are doing their job as well so it's really kind of like its own community that runs and, and we kind of call it a simulator for what it's like for when you come out into the real world and you have to deal with life's challenges we're also based on a privilege system so um, as you can see on the slide that John pulled up, you can work your way up through the structure board up to where Harry is now at the house leader position. And partly that's due through the work they've done, um, how they're working on their recovery, how well they take feedback. So all the groups we do, again, guys have to be open to receiving some feedback, which is sometimes a bit challenging. And I'm sure the guys will talk a little bit to their experiences with that. And um, Another word you might hear throughout our conversation is called an encounter. And so that's when we sit and we confront behaviors or things that maybe are not conducive to people changing their lives. Again, they both had experience with those, so I'm sure you might hear about that. Uh, and then the program has four phases. So when you first move in, you would enter into what we call an orientation phase, which is really just kind of learning about the program, the rules, the expectations, uh, there's actually a book that um, you're provided that will explain the program. From there, we move into primary, and that's what we would call the meat and potatoes of the program. So it's where you're doing all your cognitive behavioral, DPT therapy groups. Uh, you do your one-on-one -on -one counseling with the counselors during this time. You're working on a treatment plan, what your goals are for when, when you want to transition. And then the third phase is where we're looking at that you're actually demonstrating those leadership skills, you have a lot of insight, you're able to recognize what you need to work on, what's kind of kept you, um, you've worked on some of your trauma. And uh, the responsibilities increase as the phases increase. So again, they'll be running more of the groups, they'll be running the encounters and mediations. And again, like I said, hopefully reaching the leadership board. And then we have an aftercare phase, and that actually happens outside of the correctional center. And with that phase, the guys work with an outreach worker, and it's helping them get employment if they want to go to school. Um, some of them transition to the ITC and continue to do the work there, and that's still part of our aftercare. And then I think the only other thing kind of to mention is just um, the community is what initiates the change. And yeah. I think I'll leave it at that. I'm sure we'll get into more of the information as we go on throughout the conversation. Oh, sorry. And then uh, every meeting that we do, any formal meeting, we start with our philosophy. This philosophy was created 12 years ago when Guthrie opened up, and it was actually the residents that created it. And it was their legacy, and we carried it forward. So I'm going to ask Joe to start us off, and then we'll let you guys hear our philosophy that we say every day. So, we have made a commitment to change ourselves by creating a respectful, clean, and sober environment where we will heal our minds, bodies, and spirits. We will grow through individual and community challenges, changing our thoughts, beliefs, attitudes, and behaviors. We will succeed and take our rightful place in our communities. Yeah, so that, Amen. Yeah, that's a powerful statement that every day starts with, and it's really... Uh, 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 really important part of the day. It sort of sets the tone for the day. You, you, uh, Joe and Harry, you want to maybe comment a little bit on, on the resident philosophy and what it meant to you? Well, well I, I think one of the biggest things about it is there is so much in there. And uh, I remember for myself, uh, learning it took a little bit of time. Um, you, you know, we recited at the end of the orientation phase to move on to the primary phase. Uh, but I found that uh, that the more that I said it, the more that it actually sunk in, and I and I realized I wasn't just saying words; I was actually instilling those beliefs, uh, right, and and uh, in myself, and and believing that I could change my beliefs and and behaviors, and and heal, and and grow, and be part of something, uh, be part of a community, and part of something more than just myself. I mean. Um, so that that was that was a huge piece for me. I, having been in addiction and homelessness and criminal behaviors for so long, it, it's very isolating and it's very uh, uh, so uh, disconnecting from from society, from people, family, loved ones, anything. So 
so that's that was a huge uh, a huge part for me was feeling connected. Gary, yeah, I'm gonna have to say yeah, I felt connected too. That first they give they give you two weeks to memorize this, and then you have to rehearse it in front of the whole community in front of you know 40 guys, and it was quite uh, you know I was nervous at first, but you get so much help with this philosophy and. I got lots out of it, right? Like, you, you know, every day you actually wake up and you go to the morning meeting and you look forward to reading this out, right? So, you know, it changed my life and, you know, I still I still read it every morning. Hmm. It's powerful. Talk a little bit about what morning meeting is, feels like. Um, it starts at 8.30 in the morning or is it a that Yeah. Yeah, it starts 8.30 in the morning and uh, everyone's in a big circle and um there's a news board also so every every, uh, every resident has to do a gratitude what they're grateful for a day right so you know i'm grateful for i'm doing this zoom meeting right and you know i'm grateful for you know being on canadian soil um yeah and every and someone will talk about the news someone will talk about it. everything's positive that we talk about in the tc you know, I, and I remember it was, that was a really good way to kind of relearn just simple things that I know that I forgot as being kind of disconnected was talking about the news and the weather. It seems kind of trivial, but um, those are things that people chat about. And, and, and sometimes after being in self-defeating uh, behaviors and, and self-talk and, uh, you know, I didn't feel like I could maybe share just day-to-day -day stuff with people. And so... Um, it was it was really neat, and we do those quotes of the day, and and uh, and and just it was a great way to get to kind of get a conversation going without having to start it ourselves. Nice. Um, there's a question that I'm going to uh, include in this conversation, uh, and I'm just going to add, uh, ask in terms of um, uh, Joe. Joe, you mentioned uh, that you had gone to other treatment centers. Can you speak a little bit about uh, how you ended up. Uh, deciding to do Guthrie, and as part of that, the, the added question that's come in is, um, we know that it varies depending on each individual, but approximately how long did it take for you to get comfortable and adjust to the environment uh, at the Guthrie? Great, right. okay, so um, I've been in and out of, uh, out of treatment centers and recovery houses uh, for mm, probably, oh, uh, five or six or seven years before I came to Guthrie. Part of the reason I chose Guthrie was because of the length of time that, you know, it was the minimum four months and also the, um, the kind of more biopsychosocial of, uh, like, a, a, you know, um, a model, like around learning the DBT skills training and the, and the like the community as method and all of that stuff was like so uh, different from anything that I had done before. So um, and uh, and that's part of the part of the reason why I chose it was the length of time and also the new way of thinking. It wasn't just uh, kind of a three strikes you're out idea or uh, strict schedule and, and rules. This was something where. I was involved in my recovery as well as um, the peer-to-peer, -peer, you know, um, therapy, like the community as method, learning from the other guys who had been through the program for a bit and uh, or uh, were just getting ready to leave and had been through the whole thing, learning what they had been through and, and also knowing that they had also been in places I had been outside of the program, addiction or homelessness or criminal behaviors, things like that, and actually being able to relate to someone and hear their stories and what worked for them was was a key piece. Um, and then as far as how long it took for me to be comfortable there, I mean, that just walking in the door was one of the scariest things of my life, I think. And, uh, and but everyone there was so welcoming and, uh, and and supportive and encouraging. It was completely different from say walking on a unit in a regular jail where there's uh, tough guy looks and things like that. So being in this community where people came up and open arms and hello and hugs and 
and just uh, and connection was was really instrumental in making me settle in right away. And then um, getting used to the program, of course, takes some time, but it's uh, it's a it's a good schedule. And, and maybe Harry could talk a bit more to, to to that, but just it's a good routine. Like there's ebbs and flows to it. It's not just kind of all day, all day. I mean, it is all day, but um, there's there's decent breaks in, in between to be able to actually uh, implement some of the stuff that we learned. Yeah, so Harry, talk a little bit about the schedule and then Lane, I'll ask you, we've got up on the screen the therapeutic community elements. Maybe you can touch on a couple of those elements that Harry might mention and just the little technical details associated with some of that. Sure. Yeah, sure, I'll talk about the day at, uh, at Guthrie. So you, we wake up at, uh, we get up at six, we have breakfast at seven, we have to be at the meeting at 8.15. Um, and then after that 815, then we have programming, which uh, we'll do. Some people will be in the, in the first phase, which should be in orientation. And then after orientation, you will, um, we got primary. And then some people that are that been there for a while, they have re-entry. So the whole day is filled with programmings until uh, 6 o'clock. And, and each person has, has a duty. Some people go, you know, to, like we have work too also in between there like some people okay it's lunch time you know we'll have an hour break um you know we'll have our lunch people will do uh you know the, they'll do their duties that which you know some people go work on the farm or some people go work um go do painting go um go help john howard go clean the offices and uh and then at one i think it's 1 30 we have what is called um uh, what do we have at 1.30? Oh, yeah, yeah 1.30 we have our seminars. So somebody, so every, every week somebody, every, every day a person will present a seminar on, on, uh, on your recovery, right? And that's someone, and, uh, someone from the actual community, one of the residents themselves. A resident. A yeah. Resident. I remember those, something that was so cool was that we got to actually share uh, something that we learned about, you know, in the program. So it was a great way to review stuff and, and then share our perspective of what we, what we learned with the, with the other, other residents there. And, and then sometimes somebody else would learn something or pick it up from, from us that they maybe didn't hear in a different way in class, but that we picked up and again, back to that, uh, that community method. So, yeah. And then what happens after one thirty, Harry? One thirty, and then then the, there's primary game, and then the rest. Some of the other half of the residents they will go to the afternoon primary, and some people will go to work. Like I said, some people go to the farm. Some people, if you're open custody, you get to go out in the community, um, clean up trash. Um, then there's a toy run too at Christmas time. Where um, some of the residents get to go and deliver toys and um, help out in the community. Cool. So I'm going to uh, maybe ask Linda just touch on a couple of points of what might go on during a day, and then we'll maybe transition out of Guthrie into VITC because I'm expecting that a number of people who are who are watching this presentation uh, have community houses or uh, are running CRFs um, and uh, are interested in what it might look like in a community setting. To, to have therapeutic community uh, methodologies uh, and, and uh, built into a, a community housing project. But I will also say to you out there, if you want to hear more about the jail program, just shoot me a note and let me know. So, um, and one of the questions that's coming along here is, and uh, we'll speak to it in a second, is um, how does one live by community as method in, the, in everyday life when you don't have others around you who are living by that? So I'll let you prepare for that while Lynn talks a little bit about a couple of techniques. Yeah, so uh, like John mentioned, so with the community-based program, it's actually the sister program to Guthrie, so there is a lot of similarities. I will say that we're not as fully booked from start at 8.30 until in the evening, so guys are actually um, allowed to have employment after a month of being at the ITC, so the programming does look a little bit different, um, but we do still expect that they meet a mandatory of three meetings a week in order to actually reside at the ITC as well as maintain um, employment, so there are similarities in the sense, but we don't have seminars and, and pieces like that. I'm going to speak to a couple of the elements that John's posted on the PowerPoint there. 
So the one is individual interventions versus community interventions. So a lot of what we do, I mentioned, were encounter groups. So if there are issues or continuing things that are happening in either TC, we will do an encounter, which is where we bring in leaders and their mentors to provide some help around what some of the behavioral issues would be. One thing we've recognized is there's always something underlying of the behavior. So we try to get to what the root, uh, whether it's emotional, trauma, something that's causing them to behave the way they are. So that's kind of what the encounters look at. The community intervention, we do something called a house meeting. So if the house was actually having some issues or behavioral things that were continuing, we would call the whole community together and we actually open up the floor and allow residents to speak to anything that they're challenged with. If anything's happened in community and we're not sure who may have done a certain action, we will put it out to community to take accountability. That's one thing that, again, makes TC so successful is it's an accountability based program. So we're not there to punish, we're there to work with people. We understand that people have a lot of work to do. So we put it out to community and then the community rallies together to support that individual um, as long as they've taken accountability. So for BITC, because it's in the community, we do have residents that relapse. And so if they take accountability, same thing, we'll hold an in individual intervention. Then we bring the community into the decision. And if the person is supported to come back, we work with them on a plan and how to transition them back into the house so they can continue to have some support. And then the last element that I think is really important and a lot of people are always really interested when they tour Guthrie is a group that we have called Pond. It's a intensive trauma-based therapy group where again, the whole community attends. And what happens is you have three residents and two counselors that sit in the center and then the rest of the community kind of encompasses around them. And those three gentlemen are doing some very deep work around some of the trauma they've experienced as a child, um, could be something that they're recently experiencing. And then after they're done sharing, uh, it goes out to the outer circle for them, for the other residents to relate to anything they've heard, if they want to share some of their trauma. And what it does is it again allows the community to heal together. And the reason we call it a pond is because when you drop a pebble in water, it ripples out. And so that's why we chose that word is because people in the center, although they're sharing mostly, it does ripple out to the guys on the outside circle as well. Yeah, it's a very powerful experience um, for that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, uh, I just, yeah, wanted just to uh, mention a couple of things about that. One of the things you'll experience when you, uh, when you go on into a therapeutic community ours at least, is that uh, it's very polite and respectful. A uh, big part of this is learning how to live together and to live uh, in community. And uh, so, so that, that's, a, uh, that's a, one of the hallmarks of it. And I would even say to the extent that, and I'll ask Joe and, and Harry this question, if uh, there have been about a thousand uh, people who have gone through the Guthrie and VITC programs, if I pick any five names out of a hat and ask them to live in a communal house, uh, and it, randomly, they would all know how to live together, and they would live very harmoniously together. Is that, would that be a fair statement, uh, Harry or Joe? Oh, that's, that's a fair statement, of course. Um, you know, I'm living with some guys that I was uh, I was incarcerated with too, and which I um, which I when I was incarcerated, I told them to come to BITC, and they're at BITC right now. And, and uh, as a leader, you 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 have to you. Have, you the community has to come together, right? And everybody gets along. Everyone's, you know, everyone's loving and caring, right? And the number one thing is, um, when you're talking amongst the other, confidential confidentiality is a big thing, right? Um, and yeah, so I, I will touch on a few things. Lynn uh, talked about quite a few important things that uh, um, in the individual interventions and community interventions and the encounters. It, um, something to touch on with at, at Guthrie and stuff is you have a mentor when you first get there and that's another part that makes it really uh, it makes it easy to adjust and, and be comfortable in that community environment because there's someone that you can go to and talk to if you don't know where to go if you're feeling stressed out if you you just have someone a mentor to talk to and so there's that peer-to-peer -peer connection that's that's really important um, also, when you go into an encounter, it's uh, it's something. It was a big lesson for me because it was a very uncomfortable experience. 
but uh, but understand having that my mentor there as someone supportive that I've already learned to trust and know that that they were there to to support me during this experience and also understanding to not take things personal that it's it was a forum in a way to address behaviors that maybe I didn't see I know if, yeah, for living one way for so long I'd become so set in my ways and habits and uh, you know negative habits and stuff that sometimes things would happen and I wouldn't even realize that they were so um, and when the community or these other people come and and talk to me from a place of true care and concern for my well-being they're not in there pointing fingers and and yelling and saying you did this and you did that it's very like hey we've seen you know this happening and and what do you and and it's a conversation so it really opened my eyes to the fact that uh that um it made me aware of things that i was doing and so once i was aware then i could actually start to implement change and i was more conscious of when i would maybe start to be slipping into those old behaviors again so having those those encounters was key and 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 learning that it's you know it's not a negative situation it's actually a really really positive thing and uh, and um, we can we can learn so much uh, from it um, the other thing that came up for me was uh, learning to use the community as method back home when I'm in the community and I maybe I'm not in, right involved in the TC I think the biggest thing for me was that by being immersed in the therapeutic community and having that community as method, having other people that I would uh, be able to approach to set a boundary with or approach to ask a question or approach to share a success or a failure, um, by having that practice with, with these people that I have grown to to you know like and trust and and care about then once i transitioned into the community um again for me i went from guthrie to vitc and that was an excellent way to tr to trend like transition it back into the community um again with lynn said with being able to work and go out into the into the community more but what i learned was by being immersed in that community as method it made it easier for me to approach family members, uh, friends, um, you know, people in that that I had withdrawn from, that I was maybe scared or uh, had shame and guilt around talking to and, and sharing my experiences or what was really going on underneath my addictions and things like that. So by by being in that community and being able to talk to someone, it gave me those, the, the confidence and, or the, uh, just, yeah, the confidence to, to actually reach out and, and have a conversation with my mom or uh, with a friend I hadn't seen in so long. And, and then also to be able to, um, to create new relationships with, with a stranger. I'd be able to talk to someone on a basis and then, uh, but communicate well. And uh, so I think I think that was key for me. Now I'd say Harry and Joe are not unusual in terms of their ability to communicate uh, thoughts and feelings and uh, and emotions. Uh, I think a big part of the program is designed to help provide or someone develop a lexicon and an ability to articulate themselves. I'm wondering, Harry, what uh, for you um, the experience of uh, being a part of the therapeutic community has meant to you and how it's changed you uh, from uh, the person you were uh, a few years ago to where you are today. Yeah, um, you know, as, uh, when I came into Guthrie first, I had low self-esteem. Um, I felt worthless. I felt like I didn't fit in. And then that's where the TC came in. I started, I started talking to the guys. I started talking to my mentor. I started talking to the trauma counselor. Um, I started, you know, I started, I started engaging with my parents and building that trust, starting to, you know, I started to phone my mom, I started to phone my brother and my sister and building that relationship again, right? And um, the TCs taught me that it's 
okay to show your feelings. It's okay to tell people how you feel. Before, you know, I would hold those feelings in and just go back to the same same lifestyle, right? The the criminal lifestyle. So, um, yeah, it's it's done a lot for me. I'm not I'm not a shy person anymore because before I was shy, and now I just say whatever's on my mind, right? Which is good. You know, I'm not afraid to go into if someone calls me or something. I'm not afraid to. To take accountability for it because you know what this person is saying something out of care and concern towards me that's going to help me in the future yeah. um Lynch, can you talk a little bit about the support network around their around uh, therapy community the alumni uh the staff the ability to always reconnect and to connect with each other joe touched on it a little bit and i i think i'm hearing a little bit that, of that from harry as well but it's a, an important part of the the networking part of uh, TC. And I'm always sort of surprised and amazed when the program's been running for several years and, and guys who have gone through the program recently, they'll say, oh, I know that who that guy was who went through it 10 years ago. They might not have even met him, but the network is very alive and vibrant and fertile. So yeah. speak about that a little bit. Yeah, yeah so some of um, pieces that we kept in place that we thought were really important was uh, the first is the outreach worker I mentioned earlier. That's part of the aftercare program. His office is actually situated at VITC. So we made it a place that was really central that guys could feel at any time that they could pop in. Um, all the staff are always available to continue meeting with the residents once they leave. Um, but once a week, we do something called an alumni meeting. And so what that meeting entails is the gentleman from Guthrie House, as well as any of the alumni living in the community, they get together once a week and they are able to talk about the struggles they're having. Um, the guys from the community get to kind of mentor the guys that are still in Guthrie about what it's going to be like when they get out into community, provide any insight, strategies, support for them. Um, once a month we do community events where again we bring all the guys together, we teach them how to do things that are pro-social, that you don't need to do under the influence of substances. Um, we do a celebration meeting at Guthrie once a month as well, where we invite guys from community to come back, share their stories. One thing we know about change is we need to see it in order to know it's possible. And so that was one thing we recognized early on. And so we allow the alumni to come back in, show guys that change is possible. And I think that's one of the things that keeps guys really wanting to keep the work going, keeps them really motivated. Um, but yeah, like John said, all the staff are always available. I've Personally, still in contact with guys I worked with nine years ago. I think once they become part of that community, they continue to build and um, they have a Facebook group. I think they still do morning meeting on Facebook. So a lot of it is um, geared by them as well, and they kept it going, and we just supported the things that they implemented as well. Thanks. Now, what's it, what does the alumni group mean to each of you, uh, Joe and Harry? Well, uh, uh, I'll. I just wanted to touch a little bit on the celebrations, the monthly celebrations, where uh, as an alumni, I can go back in and uh, and see the guys and visit because, um, as Lynn said, it's it's inspiring for them to see um, to see someone doing well on the outside and in, in the community and, and moving forward. At the same time, it was always inspiring to me and reaffirming uh, that I had made the right choice and made the right decision and seeing those guys in there doing the work and risking to do something different and be someone different is, uh, was amazing. And, um, and, and then the other, I mean, it's, I've been really busy, so I haven't made it to a lot of the alumni, uh, meetings, but, uh, but I still go back once a month for sure to the, to the guys in Guthrie and, and try and be connected that way. And um, and always leave my number and stuff like that when you know if anyone needs it. So, and that that's uh, that's wonderful. And then the other thing that came up was that uh, Harry mentioned about feeling unworthy and stuff. And I think that's a huge key for everyone in there. And uh, through the TC programming and and there's so many um, steps or these feelings of accomplishment uh, by learning something, sharing it with the guys going through the different phases, those feelings of accomplishment are huge in transforming um, the self, uh, self image. And uh, yeah, it's, it's huge. Mary? I did want to make another point, sorry, is um, I know that I said that, you know, when guys are doing well, they come back in, but I also 
want to make a point to recognize that we also do have clients that do struggle sometimes and maybe do relapse, but they are still always part of the alumni and they also are welcome back to celebration. And I think again, what's powerful about that is it shows guys that even if you have a slip or a relapse, you can still get back on track and you're still part of the community. So I just thought that was important to mention as well, because we obviously do have guys that can struggle, but we do support them and they're always welcome to come back as well. That's so important because the, sh the you know, if you have a struggle or a slip, the the habit and the the shame and the guilt comes in and you just want to you want to run away you don't want to share with anyone you don't want to talk but being connected to these these people and having that someone who understands what it's like to relapse or to slip and being able to actually call them up or go and see them or have someone come and pick you up and take you away from somewhere that you don't want to be is uh, I mean it's a huge huge factor in, in being able to have success. Harry, what did it mean for you to have someone uh, to have guys come back every month and uh, participate in um, in the? Oh, I loved it. I, I you know I used to uh, like when I was in God Threes, I used to get excited because I you know my friends are my friends are on the street doing well, and you see them come in, and it was it was quite the treat, right? They get to sit down, they get to have a good meal with you, you get to listen to all their all the good things they've done, and then you. And you start looking forward to that, right? So I'm alumni now. Now I go back into the prison, and uh, I'm like a big mentor, right? I feel it now. Before um, I've done a lot of work, but it seems like I haven't. But hearing it from the guys when you go back into that three, that's it's it's a, you know I I left quite the legacy there, right? Like I have lots of learning disabilities that I worked on, and yeah, yeah it's just it's quite the experience going back into into a prison. And not in handcuffs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> willingly, willingly going back. Um, let's talk a little bit, if we can, just because I don't want to um, want to give us the give the impression that therapeutic community is only about addiction. Uh, really, I think uh, we don't. We're. I think, and Lynn, you can maybe speak to this. That really, we're dealing with underlying traumas, uh, and uh, and as we know, trauma uh, it, uh, therapy is a is a huge part of the motivation around uh, whether someone is uh, addressing their addiction or not. And, uh, and I think that's the doorway into how it can be used in settings where it might be a wet housing project, or it may be that they're, that uh, it's just a community that wants to live well together. And they're, they're not necessarily uh, dealing with addiction or, or uh, dealing with substance resistance. Yeah. So for the TC, I think what makes it work is that, there's just a common purpose. And I think it's really up to whatever that community is going to look like to decide what the common purpose is. Like if it's a harm reduction model, maybe that's the common purpose. Um, for RTCs, it is addiction based, but we also look at criminal behaviors. A lot of guys have to work on that. And then like you mentioned, John, it's about the underlying trauma. One of the things that we say in both TC programs is that addiction is actually just a symptom of something that's going on. So it's a small piece of the whole circle. So that's what TC does is it kind of focuses on the whole picture. Um, addiction might be a part of that picture, but there is the trauma that they need to address. There are behaviors that lead to, you know, struggles in life. And so I do think it's adaptable to other places because really it's just about creating like Joe mentioned, like a circle of support of people around you that there's no judgment. They take you as you are and they support you where you're at. And, you know, that's what we say, work with people where they're at. Joe, you're going to mention. Well, that, that, uh, that, um, sorry, I just had someone knock at the window and it kind of <laughs> distracted me. But, uh, but I mean, I, as far as, uh, I, I think this, you know, the TC and stuff could be applied in so many ways. Uh, I, I mean, there are things that I learned in there that I shared with my mom and we have better communication now. There's, there's things that, uh, that I share with, uh, you know, fellow filmmakers and stuff just about, and it's, so it's amazing. It, it can really be applied to, to, to real, to real life. And, um, and so, I think that uh, that definitely there's that there's many applications for it, and and then the thing about the underlying traumas is I, I I mean 
I think that's getting to be common knowledge is that the, the you know, drug abuse or even criminal um, behaviors and stuff, it's all, it's acting out to, to suppress, uh, you know, traumas or to cover up uh, feelings that, uh, that, for me personally, that I didn't want to deal with, that uh, I just wanted to be numb all the time because I hurt so bad inside and things. Uh, so, so by, and, and now I, um, you know, I can look myself in the mirror, I can, I, I, I mean, I'm a completely different person and it's taken a lot of work. That's not to say that it, it happens overnight. And that's what's so important too about being in these programs is, is going through and it's just taking one step at a time and day by day and, 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 uh, and understanding that there's sometimes you take a couple steps back and then you just keep going. You just keep moving forward and, and, uh, and it, it does sink in and it does become you can unlearn these old habits and re uh, and and learn new ones, uh, new ways of thinking about myself, new core beliefs, like uh, all sorts of uh, incredible uh, self self realizations. So, the um, the uh, the research that's been done on Guthrie uh, uh, program in particular uh, indicates that of about the thousand people who've gone through the program, it's about forty five percent successful. Uh, uh, for participants, which is remarkable in a you know addiction program, and then in, in particular a prison-based addiction program. If we uh, we then have uh, have had many people who have gone through the program more than once, as I would say, they've they've done more than one tour of duty, and uh, and in uh, in the case of them, they they're you know that's that's going to ramp up the success that much more for them. So uh, you know we know that the the uh, the research shows that it's a it's a very successful program. Uh, and it's very successful because it addresses all the aspects of life that someone has to uh, have skill in to be successful and accomplished. Um, there was a letter that was sent to me not so long ago uh, by a company. And it's, uh, let's just read one line of that letter because it says so much about uh, the people who go through the Guthrie program. And it reads that the people who came through the Guthrie program are far more job ready in my mind than the average person applying for the job. The skills they've learned in practice make them exemplary employees. They're motivated, caring, and compassionate people with well-honed skills in conflict resolution and clear communication. So that just sort of says so much about what uh, everyone who goes through the program seems to gather in one form or other. And um, uh, it's quite remarkable how, how um, successful the program has been, and uh, which is why we get so excited and thrilled about it notwithstanding the fact that we get to uh, work with and uh, share the experience with wonderful people like Joe and Harry. So um, it's really terrific uh, in that regard. I'm going to just sort of transition us uh, to answer any questions that you might have out there. Uh, and again, um, I'm just going to put up on the screen that there's a couple of ways you can catch up to us. We're quite uh, active and involved in, in, uh, in doing work, but Lynn and I are more than willing and happy to uh, to connect with you and have uh, conversations about this, about what you're doing in uh, um, in your part of the world. And uh, if there's a way that we can help, that's terrific. Um, or we can maybe even just make some suggestions. Uh, it sounds like um, the programs that we have are so, you know, sort of uh, far along the curve in terms of development that it's not possible to get something go like this going. But I think the, the starting place for this is that we started somewhere, uh, we built it over time, uh, we figured out how to fund it, and uh, and as a result of that, there's um, there's hundreds and hundreds of uh, community members now who are really exemplary members of the community and who have taken their real place in community. So, um, so I, uh, with that, I think I will open up to uh, to the floor to see if there are any questions. And um, and I, by the way, I like this picture because it says, "Please practice social distancing," and then everyone's crowded into space. <laughs> Mary and Lynn are actually sitting a little closer together than we would have otherwise done, but they actually work and live in the uh, work in the same facility at DITC. So they are uh, they try and practice social distancing, but they really hard for them to have not crossed paths fairly regularly. So um, Deanna asked how many participants have gone through the program. As we mentioned, uh, about a thousand people, and uh, you know it's a little it's, it's an inexact number. Uh, because some people have maybe come in uh, more than once to the program, or they've gone from Guthrie to BITC, and then they've left and come back. And so there's a little bit of flow that happens in that regard. Yeah. 
And something you mentioned, John, was about people returning to the program and going through it again or having a couple couple tries at it. Uh, I remember for myself, you know, I when I would go back for those celebrations, sometimes I would see a guy who had been released and then he was back in there. And, and I even saw a couple guys who got released and back in there a couple times. But the great thing was that they always knew they would be um, welcomed and supported back in that environment and i mean the 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 trick is to keep trying no matter no matter what happens is to just keep at it and and i would would always share how proud i was of these guys because that it's easy i know on a personal level it's easy for that shame and guilt to kick in and i go oh well i screwed up I, i'm there's no point in in going back or they're going to think less of me and, and there's never never any of that it's just pure support for you know falling down seven times and getting up eight right this is it Harry. anything you'd like to add to that yeah no that's the same thing with vitc you know so this, we get some uh, we get some residents that relapse and that's where you know we come in we still support them i we still phone them we'll still check up on them we'll, we'll give them that support to come back to vitc right yeah and uh, i think that's uh, that's a big key of uh, with the TC, right? It taught me how to support one another, right? How to give that uh, other guy, you know, confidence to even come back, right? Yeah. Not to be ashamed. So there's a raft of questions flying in here. I'm going to try and keep track of them. Um, uh, there's a question about volunteers. Contact Lynn or I, and uh, and uh, if you're in the local area or even if you're in BC, uh, we have uh, we probably have Guthrie alumni scattered across the country. And someone asks, how do Guthrie alumni stay connected with the program when they're not? Uh, in the local area. There is a Facebook page uh, that's active, very active, and uh, Guthrie alumni participate in, in that as well. And uh, we are doing meetings, we have been doing meetings as a result of uh, COVID on, on Zoom. And so uh, Guthrie alumni can participate uh, using that as well. Um, someone asked, uh, Liz is, uh, maybe Liz is asking, how would someone, what advice would you give to someone wanting to establish a TC in their community? Uh, Lynn, what would you say uh, about that because we're establishing uh, one right now in uh, Northwest Territories and uh, we're having discussions with another in another community uh, with two with two other communities so uh, that's a big question um, I actually don't know if I can just think I think it's um really just about figuring out what your vision is and just staying true to that I mean there's things we've done that have worked but our program has never been static either we're always constantly reinventing and adding things that come along so i guess the advi best advice i'd have is to try something out and if it doesn't work then just kind of keep changing and switching until you find what works for your community and your program and it's what we do at both places for ourselves as well yeah i would say that what we, our experience has been is that the uh the most challenging part of tc is not the community that the most challenging part is actually training uh the staff to become a uh, skilled uh <laughs> rational authority um it's a it's a very different model when you when the community is managing itself, and uh, and a, a different approach to how you look at the hierarchy of that community. Uh, in many ways, like the the uh, the staff act as kind of uh, referees, consultants, advisors, facilitators. Uh, the community is is self managing in terms of uh, addressing uh, uh, complicated issues or issues around conflict, um, and it's. Um, uh, so it's a it's an interesting and different model. We do uh, participate in individual counseling as well, but the, for the most part, what we're doing is teaching the residents, the, part the participants, uh, how to um, uh, work with each other to help uh, build a healthy community, and uh, and that's just, a very different model. I just want to add to what John says. So one of the things. Um, that's really unique about VHC as well is that um, I'm not a 24 hour staff program. So my staff actually leave at seven o'clock at night and it's the residents that maintain the safety of the house. So that's one thing that I think shows how effective TC can be is that we don't need to staff it for the evening. Yeah, we've had uh, the Guthrie program, which is a prison program that was designed for maximum security as, uh, clients. Uh, there have been uh, maybe two instances of any kind of like level of uh, conflict, physical conflict, and those are 
really insignificant. We're talking about a thousand people who had otherwise gone through uh, correctional centers at the federal and provincial levels. So that sort of, to me, always speaks volumes about the uh, the fact that um, Joe's going to just turn off his microphone there for a second. Um, that uh, speaks volumes to the uh, to the effectiveness of the program and to the, to the welcoming nature of the program itself for for participants. Um, uh, Andrew's asking uh, if we can maybe speak to uh, a previous comment about wet TCs and the idea about uh, uh, wet TC. I think what we were trying to say there is that really what we're addressing is underlying traumas. So if we build a therapeutic community and there's a component of it that is uh, that involves uh, harm reduction, then uh, we're still addressing underlying traumas. We're not really, uh, the focus of the community is, is defined by the community. And then that community of participants who want to be there are, um, are going to work towards whatever their goals are that they've defined. So that's the nature of it. We're not, uh, we're not coming in and, uh, and uh, putting our overlay on that community. We're working with the community. Uh, the community builds the metrics and parameters around what it's going to look like. And then we apply therapeutic community methodology to, to what it is that they're trying to achieve. Lynn, do you want to add to that? Uh, I think, um, like you mentioned, I mean, one of the goals could be for harm reduction as well, just minimizing the harm clients are doing to themselves or even just like violence that might occur. So I, again, I think it's just whatever the purpose of that particular model would look like for the organization. Yeah, it's really, uh, and this is where Harry and Joe can answer or speak to this as well. It's really about building community, strong community and, and providing the skills so that everyone in the community knows how to interact. Uh, and they know how to interact in a way that is predictable, uh, just like in a family setting where, you, you know, hopefully in a healthy family, you've got fairly predictable responses to things. Uh, and uh, and so I, I would say in, in many ways, well, in almost every way I can speak of, uh, therapeutic community communities are, are very healthy places. I, I, I always, when I go for a visit, I leave the therapeutic community kind of walking on uh, walking on the moon a little bit, as Sting would say. Uh, you, know, you just feel a little lightness in my feet because it just feels so great. Everyone is in such a good frame of mind. And uh, it really is kind of a little bit of heaven, quite a heaven in, uh, in the world. And uh, so it's quite remarkable in that regard. And it seems like it works with whoever you build community, a therapeutic community with, uh, that everyone wants to have balance in their lives. They want to feel well, they, they really do. And so we provide some of the tools and the pathway to get there. Harry and Joe, you want to maybe comment on that a little bit? Uh, just about that. Sure. But, um, yeah, like I said, the, the, you know, the two, we keep it as community. Everybody's usually every everyone's positive. Everyone talks about their feelings, how they feel, um, and we provide that as leaders and as residents of BITC. Hey, it's okay if you're you're homeless. It's okay if you you know you were abused as a kid. You know, we give that we give that that welcome and that uh, it's a safe place to talk about it also you know yeah and something that came comes up is that um like we we say that everyone's positive and and there's a really good strong positive feeling and, and environment that's not to say that there aren't um struggles and challenges or emotions that come up uh the difference is that we've uh learned or are learning how to respond to those uh, situations, respond to a conflict, respond to an internal challenge, um, respond to communicating with family for the first time in, in years and being able to, you know, hear something that I maybe don't want to hear, but I've learned how to deal with that through encounters. And, and so then when I, I can have these chats and, and really just turn any situation into a positive experience, whether it's uh, seemingly uh, difficult or challenging or, or a negative. Um, and so having those, uh, those learned skills and stuff and, and, and new ways of thinking and, and, and acting uh, creates all these opportunities to, to turn um, any challenges that come up, whether it's a slip, a relapse, uh, uh, you know, even getting angry with someone or uh, being sad or guilty and emotional, learning how to process all of those experiences in a way that turn it into 
a learning experience, turn it into growth and, uh, and, and continual change. Thank you. So we're at the, we're at about the one hour mark. That went by fast. And uh, we could talk about this for a long time. And, uh, you know, we're not chatty at all, really. No. Um, so, um, so I'm just uh, sending a note to Liz to ask how we want to wrap this up. We're not sure because this is our first uh, uh, online presentation. But uh, The last thing I would say on the question about wanting to establish a, a TC in their community yeah. is, um, is come and check this one out, right? Come and take a tour, talk to Lynn and John and, yeah. and, uh, and come and see how it works. That's a really great way to, to see it firsthand and um, mm -hmm. is, is pretty uh, impactful, I think. Yeah, and we'll, we can do a virtual tour with you if you're, if you're so inclined. Yeah, and also if there's any questions we didn't get to, I'm open to anyone that wants to email and I can respond via email as well. Absolutely. So we were, um, you know, I think that um, what we would like to do is to reach out to you as well. And if you're open to that, um, We'll, uh, you might, you know, get a, an email from me just saying, what'd you think? Uh, are you interested at all? Or uh, do you want to have a chat about this? Or is there anything we can, we can answer that uh, we might not have answered in this mm -hmm. presentation? Um, and, um, and we're thrilled to have had the opportunity to speak about this program. I really appreciate Thank it. Thank you, everybody. Um, I really do. So, thanks wonderful. so much. And I can hear Liz coming in on the other side. So I'm going to relinquish my camera now to Liz. And uh, thanks so much, everyone. Okay, we will thank you so much to the team in Nanaimo. Obviously, thanks to John and Lynn for sharing your expertise, but most especially to Harry and Joe for sharing your personal experience of having uh, worked through this transformative experience. It's so inspirational to hear from you, and thank you for taking the time to share with everybody on the call. So I think, yeah, we had almost 80 people listening in. Um, it, there's a, from my perspective, a really successful kickoff to our speaker series. So thank you so much. I think it's going to tie in pretty well to our next session as well. So that's next Tuesday at the same time. Uh, that would be a presentation from a team from UBC, the, the university here, uh, also focusing on trauma um, being at the root of issues that people are facing as they're working through addiction and people who've been involved in the criminal justice system. So I think we're gonna be talking about similar issues and I really hope that uh, there's some pieces in there that will interest the team here. So thank you so much. We will sign off. Thank you. Yeah, if you guys, um, or as I said, very everyone's very much welcome to get in touch. John and Lynn have left their uh, their contact details on the screen here. If at any point you lose them, feel free to get in touch with the team here. We can definitely reconnect you. So thank you so much, everybody. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>